I feel like there are a lot of struggles with having to move back in with your parents after having lived on your own but one of the biggest ones that's been like fucking with my mental health lately is my lack of privacy and I'm not talking like the privacy to call my friends or like invite my friends over the obvious things like that it's more like when I wake up in the morning I hear my mom like clinking away in the kitchen or my dad shuffling around or my mom starts vacuum cleaning or she comes in my room and she cleans my bathroom for no reason literally this morning I woke up at 6 30 which is really unusual for me and I went to the kitchen to drink water and my mom was like why are you up so early and it's a seemingly innocent question that shouldn't trigger me but like when I was living alone no one questioned why I did things it's like why can't I just wake up and drink water and why can't I wake up early because I feel like why do I have to get up and explain to someone else why I'm doing something I don't know it was just so triggering for me so much for me this morning I got really upset and I literally came out of the house to eat breakfast by myself because I just need time and space away and it's not my parents fault i know it's not they're allowed to talk to me is so like frustrating for me as like a 26 year old who's experienced living alone and now like i have to experience all of this and it's like uh, it just reminds me of my insecurity of living at home right now is i'm gonna go eat why does no one prepare you for how genuinely fucking crazy living with your parents as an adult will make you feel especially when you've already lived on your own for like a significant amount of time and you end up moving back in with your parents <laughs> that shit is so fucking up the leg i was living on my own well like with roommates but you know on my own out in utah where the rent for a three bedroom two bathroom apartment was fifteen hundred dollars i paid five hundred dollars in rent to have a gigantic master bedroom and bathroom i wanted to move back to california like where i'm from so i moved back in with my dad because rent free yeah i'm financially stable but at what fucking cost it sucks because i feel fucking ungrateful like i love my dad i do and the fact that i get to live in orange county california which is like ridiculously expensive and super close to la which is also ridiculously expensive and i get my own bedroom and bathroom for literally no rent right like i need to be grateful but oh my god i hate it here i hate i'm living in my fucking childhood bedroom and mind you i've been living on my own since i was 18 because i got kicked out like less than a month after i turned 18 I feel like a kid again and like not in a good way. There's very little room for personal growth when you shove yourself back in a cocoon that you have already grown out of. And it sucks because I feel like there's this resentment that builds up. 2024, my goal is to move back out because y'all, I cannot fucking do this anymore. Living at home is like literally the most frustrating thing in the world. And like, I feel so ungrateful for like way that I'm feeling because I know that I'm like lucky that at least I like have a home to go to after I like left my job like I'm really lucky but at the same time like it just contributes to like so much of like a loss in identity and like a loss in independence like someone is home all the time and I like don't have any privacy and I like don't have like any like spaces to myself coming back to like your childhood bedroom that like is just so not the person you are anymore and like having all of this like random shit and like it's not your space and it doesn't feel like your space anymore and like side note like my mom just decided to start renovating like half our house so now like we're all on one side of the house and like in our, like another tiny room that's like not mine and my stuff is everywhere not to mention like i don't see my fucking friends anymore like i genuinely can't just go like grab a coffee with someone after work or like meet them for lunch like i'm just in a different town like miles and miles away and don't don't even get me started on like the fact that you probably can't even date anyone because your parents are like all up in your business and like you've nowhere to like no space to bring them into and i feel so stupid for complaining about all of this because like people literally like are homeless and dying and like i'm complaining about being in my parents house champagne problems <laughs> Hey everyone, it's me, welcome back to my channel, back in the video, and I am here with my, not my first video of 2024, technically, this is my first time filming in 2024, so happy new year, <laughs> I'm saying this uh, on the 15th of January, I'm not sure when this video will go up, but um, yeah, I, I really miss this, I really miss sitting down and getting on camera and talking, I literally haven't filmed a video since I think the last week of December, or maybe even even the week before that so it's been like almost two to three weeks since i filmed and oh my god i've missed it so much honestly i've just been trying to balance my schedule because if you guys didn't watch my recap video i actually announced 
Well, there's two things I announced, actually. I announced that I finally got a job, but I also announced that I have a new membership program. So if you guys are interested in getting any exclusive content from me or if you're interested in getting content early from me, make sure you guys check out my membership program. I have both the YouTube membership program as well as Patreon. So whichever one or whichever platform you prefer, make sure you guys check that out if you're interested, of course. Um, But yeah, I have a new job. And so obviously I'm now having to balance content creation with working. And it's definitely been a challenge as I knew that it would be. Um, And right now I am working part time, but I'm working 30 hours. So I'm like right at the cutoff for part time hours. You know, I've just been trying to get a feel for that job and getting a good rhythm going for, you know, that role. And so it hasn't really allowed me a lot of time that I had previously to just sit and, and film a video. And so I will give a fair warning that the amount of content that I put out on this channel might slow down a little bit. I'm still gonna aim to do no less than one new video a week. I know that lately I've been pushing out two to three videos a week. Um, That last month in December, I was pushing out like every single day because I just wanted to get everything out. And I still didn't get everything out. I mean, the video I made about people pleasing, I had intended on getting that video out in December too. But honestly, I just was feeling very burnt out with filming and editing videos every single day that I just, I made the executive decision to push it for January. And so, yeah this is my first time back on camera I'm really excited to get back into the swing of things and to talk about some stuff because there's been a lot going on I mean I have kind of taken a step back from talking about celebrities as much just because the responses that I was getting from my celebrity content just wasn't positive and it just seemed like people didn't really want to see celebrity content from me anymore so that's why I just kind of took a pause on that but in case you were curious yes I have seen all the things that have been going on in the news I saw the whole Cat Williams interview situation and you know Holly and DDG had their child I I am caught up okay I'm caught up on all of that and so I mean if you guys want me to talk about some of that stuff maybe not Cat Williams because Cat that whole Cat Williams situation that was just that was a lot there was there was a lot in that I still haven't even finished the full interview yet because again I've been so busy and so I probably won't make a video about Cat Williams but you know I have been thinking about making a video about Holly and DDG but you know I I don't know if that topic has came and gone already um I also wanted to talk about Taraji P Henson and how you know black actresses and actors aren't getting paid there's a lot of stuff I've been wanting to talk about so if you guys are interested in me talking about those things let me know in the comments this particular video I wanted to make because I came across a TikTok recently and honestly I've been coming across a few TikToks about this topic which honestly had made me feel very seen and very heard and it's on the topic of living at home in your 20s now as I've talked about time and time again you know I still currently live at home and that is not where I wanted to be at this time in my life with me being 24 and me turning 25 <laughs> turning 25 this year a whole quarter century Jesus um I was not intending on being at home for this long at all you know I've told the story before but for anyone that hasn't heard me talk about this my last winter break really spring break really both <laughs> my last winter and spring break because honestly I hadn't intended on coming home for that spring break either but then things happened and I ended up going home but anyway so like my last spring break at college in my senior year I literally told my mom hey go ahead and start getting rid of my groceries go ahead and start you know getting rid of some stuff and cleaning stuff out and go ahead and you know do whatever because I'm not coming back I was so sure and so confident that I was not coming back home that I literally told my mom hey prepare for me not to come back because I literally had in my head that once I graduated from college that I was going to move straight from my dorm to a new apartment and that is something that I had set in stone in my mind literally from my freshman year of college and the reason why I, too I want to bring that up because a lot of times you know when people talk about you know manifestation and you know setting goals and speaking things into existence I think for me I just I I've had a really hard time believing in manifestation and all those things because it just has not panned out for me and worked out for me. Now, I'm not saying that nothing good has ever happened in my life, but whenever I've like set a specific goal, worked towards it, spoken into existence, it almost felt
felt like I would start going backwards from the goal. And so for me, it's just, I, I've never been able to manifest anything. And I would think with the way that manifestation goes and how people talk about it, I would think that me speaking into existence from the age of 18, hey, this is going to happen. Like if people say it all the time, like, oh, well, the reason why this didn't happen is because, you know, you weren't believing in yourself and you weren't sticking to it and you didn't, you didn't believe the words that you were saying. Or people will say like, oh, well, it's because you didn't say that this is going to happen. When it came to moving out, I 100% was like, this is going to happen. Like, I can't even picture anything else. I'm not going to picture anything else. That I would look at apartments all the time on my laptop. Like, it was definitely something that, like, I stuck to. And, like, I didn't even allow my mind to even think about the possibility of me going back home. Because I'm like, that just, that cannot happen. And even with me consistently having that goal for four years and working towards it and you know doing everything like even trying to prepare myself right like saving up money building up my credit like there were so many things in the works for the four years leading up to me graduating so I could prepare to move out and so clearly it didn't happen and it is now going on two years almost that I've been at home since graduated from college and so that was kind of the realization that I don't really have much control over my life things are going to happen the way they're going to happen and like I said if manifestation works for y'all great I'm happy for you but for me it, it just has not panned out for me it's just more so I've come to the realization that things are going to happen when they're supposed to happen it doesn't really matter how much I do or how much energy I put towards something things are going to happen when they're supposed to happen same thing with me finding a job right I put in so much into my job search. I mean, job hunting had become a job within itself. And, you know, I had been applying to jobs, interviewing with jobs, and that just became very, very exhausting. I started doing like certification classes. And, and, and this is, you know, another point to that too, right? Because in December, so I, I got offered a job in December, right? towards the end of December. But the beginning of December, I was doing everything under the sun. I started, you know, taking certification tests and studying for certification tests. I started redoing my entire portfolio from scratch. I was looking up templates. I was looking up all sorts of things. I was pulling analytics from projects that I've worked on. I was literally doing the most, and I have been doing the most for like the past two years now to try and get a job. And then, I finally got the job, but not because of any of the work and energy that I had been putting in beforehand. I literally got this job from meeting the right person, getting to know them, and them offering me a job pretty much on the spot. Like I pretty much was just handed the job just from meeting the right person. I didn't have to submit a resume. I didn't have to fill out any application. I didn't have to submit a portfolio. I literally, <laughs> I literally didn't have to do anything to get this job other than just I happened to meet the right person at the right time. All them interviews, all them applications, all the certifications, ev everything that I did and exhausted myself doing still didn't end me to the to the final result, right? And so I think that was like yet another reminder of like things are gonna happen when it's meant to happen. Like in me stressing myself out and doing the most to try and get this goal is it's not benefiting me at all. And I think that's why I at a certain point last year I was like look I'm gonna stop stressing myself out and trying to put things into my own hands hands and I'm just going to give it all to God because clearly me trying to control my circumstances and my situation is not doing anything and if anything it's just harming me and my mental health and so that's kind of the mindset that I've picked up with moving out oh obviously I want to move out <laughs> I want to move out so bad more than anybody knows but it's kind of something that I've put to the side it's not something that I'm focused on and it's no longer really a goal kind of like with marriage right I talked about that in a couple of videos like moving out out is no longer my top priority because I just feel like the more energy I put into it and the more I get fixated on it the more depressed I get I'm not gonna lie like it the fact that I was living at home it took a toll on me a lot especially when I first had to move back home I was so devastated and honestly I was miserable I was literally miserable because it was like it, it just felt like such a big failure like imagine working towards something for several years and telling yourself this is going to happen no matter what what and then it doesn't happen should you live with your parents past 22 i'm 20 right now i'm still living with my parents 
Yeah, see, here's the thing, right? Come here. At this point, there is no longer an age limit to staying with parents. Does that make sense? Right? I know before it was like, oh, once we turn like 20 or so, try to move out of your parents' house. The way that life is going, that is quite literally almost impossible at this point. People who claim they don't live with their parents anymore, come here. They probably have roommates somewhere else, right? And living with your parents or living with roommates, both are pretty uncomfortable. The only difference is, at least if you live with your parents, somebody's going to say that they love you at the end of the night. Well, for most of us. But the, you know what I'm saying, right? At this point, living by yourself is almost impossible. Anybody who does live by themselves, they either are working so much that they can't even enjoy living by themselves, or somebody is helping them pay those bills because at this point, it's impossible. Do you think there's a shame to moving out of your parents' house late? No, bro. Why I think a lot more, of people try more, to shame people. Let's not bro, say black. Like, more, more urban people, more urban communities need to let they need to let their kids stay till like That's a 30 fact. 25 28 cuz suburban communities they let people they not not people they let their kids stay until they right that goes back to your conversation of do you have a thousand dollars saved up yeah. them they could they got 10 racks they got 20 they got 30, bags yeah. so when they leave it's like oh yeah, I can sure. get fired and not even care yeah. you know what i mean because it's a a safety net and it almost got to a point where every single day was a reminder of how badly I didn't want to be at home. And it's because, and you know, everyone's family dynamics are different, right? And for some people, living at home is great. It's relaxing. It's, it's chill. But then for some of us, actually for a lot of us, because again, I've been seeing a lot of these videos uh, circulate on TikTok, where a lot of us, you know, we come from families and parents that are just very invasive you know a lot of us grew up with helicopter parents and a lot of them have not let that go even with us entering into adulthood a lot of us are still having to deal with that overprotectiveness and invasiveness from our parents that we dealt with when we were kids and a lot of our parents are you know they're, they're not <laughs> understanding that we're adults now and a lot of that stuff that we used to have to put up with when we were kids that shouldn't fly now because i am a grown adult listen I'm 24 and I still live at home like what for sure are you kidding me my man and I we attempted to move out yeah that'll be $1,600 for a studio apartment not including groceries not including partying not including living Woo! I don't know where that voice came from but that was probably the devil himself because you're out of your mind if you think we're gonna pay that to go live in a little box get out of here so now I'm, I'm staying at home but the problem is I love my parents they're amazing, but they still think I'm a kid because I'm here. But babe, does this afro look like it's made for a kid? This is a grown woman thing we got going on. And bro, just like today, I told my dad, I'm like, oh, I might have some some people over after. Oh my god, what's happening? Are you gonna clean the house? Are you gonna are you gonna wash the dishes? No, no, I'm gonna invite everybody into my home and be like, look, look, this is this is how we live here. Welcome. God's sakes. Can we talk about living at home as an adult for a second? Because I have a lot to say about it. I moved back in with my grandparents, but my parents also live here when I was 25, a year ago, after I broke up with my ex. We've been together for six and a half years. I'd lived away since I was 19. Like, haven't lived at home since I was 19, like, almost 10 years. Simple things, like, you get home from... I get home from a work trip, for example, and everyone's like, how was it? And obviously, I want to talk to you, but I'm tired. I also just want my own space. I just want to be by myself. Constantly being aware of your surroundings making sure you're not making mess making sure you're not being loud making sure if they're using the kitchen you're not using it as well you've got to be around all these people that you necessarily wouldn't be around but you have to be around because you're in a circumstance when you have to live at home let's also talk about you can't really have anyone over i want my friends to come around i want to host dinner parties i want to have some drinks or i want to come home drunk and i can't and the reality of living at home when you're an adult is awful like, they treat you like you're a child, for one. I'm an adult. Please don't come up to my space. I pay rent every single month. I don't live here for free. So get off my back. Get off my back. I just want to let you know that I can relate to you if you live at home with your family because it's rough in these streets. Like, it truly is. And one of the hardest things to to deal with when coming back home was my loss of independence, right? So obviously when you're in college, you are on your own, right? And the college that I chose was almost three hours away from home. And I did that on purpose. <laughs> 
I, I, I did that on purpose. I kid you not, some of the colleges that I was looking at even before I chose like George Mason, I was looking at colleges that weren't even in Virginia because I, I just, I wanted something new so bad. Like when I was about to graduate from high school, I had came to that realization like that, you know, I've been in the same town for my entire life. I've been doing the same things for my entire life. I've been in the same environments for my entire life and I am tired. I'm ready for something new. I am ready to just I'm just ready to put myself in a new environment and so I was willing to go wherever I mean there was a college in New York that I wanted to go to I think it was Syracuse I I was looking at all kinds of colleges um also SCAD the Savannah College of Art and Design I wanted to go there I was looking at all kinds of colleges but then even with that my mom was like she definitely hindered me a lot when it came to picking a college she claims that she did but there were certain colleges in certain areas where she was like if you choose to go to college here like I'm not I'm not helping you out with that like in terms of like move in and all that like even like Howard like I think I had briefly considered Howard or I even I had considered transferring to Howard at one point and she was like no I'm not I'm not driving to DC like if you pick to go to Howard if you pick to go to another state like good luck like you have to figure it out on your own and because at that point in time I was so just like lost and didn't really know how to take care of myself the idea of trying to move into college without any help and also at that time not even really knowing how to drive and how to get around on my own it, it, it was very isolating and it, it felt like I didn't really have much control at that point and so you know I picked George Mason it was close enough that my mom was willing to kind of sort of be there but then also far enough away to where she can't just pop up whenever she feels like it and so you know George Mason was a was a happy medium of that right but anyway in, in terms of independence right I I so miss being able to just you know get up and do things on my own time or you know if I wanted to go eat I just you know got up walked to wherever I wanted to go or if I wanted to make plans with somebody I would just make the plans and go like I didn't have to ask permission I didn't have to let anybody know what I was doing or where I was going I enjoy just being able to get up go do things on my own time and just being able to kind of move around freely now granted there was still some restrictions there because again I didn't really know how to walk around I didn't have a car or anything up there and that too is a whole nother story about how no one really helped me figure out how to how to get around when I was in Fairfax at least not until like the tail end of my time there and even then it was kind of a bit of a struggle but yeah like I just I miss that I miss being able to just move freely and I think a lot of that has to do too with the fact that I don't really drive currently um you know I've, I've talked about that too and so me not driving and then me also living in a town that's very car dependent and doesn't have a lot of like public transportation either I've kind of just been stuck here I've kind of just been stuck here and it sucks to just not really be able to move freely it just contributes to like so much of like a loss in identity and like a loss in independence this video really just like broke my heart because literally this time last year I was in that exact same position I had to move from LA into my sister's home in my small southern town in South Carolina. Not only did I lose a majority of what I felt like I worked so hard to get in LA, I was at rock bottom. Like I legit thought that like my world was over. I was a failure. I was struggling with that same thing of like, just feeling like I had no privacy. Like, I was like exposed while I was trying to like heal and figure out my life. So I really gave myself the space to like grieve my independence and this was no grieving of like, oh, I was over it in like two days. I was over it for a week. No, I went through it for months. I literally was in therapy trying to process what the heck had gone wrong in my life. That process allowed me to connect with my therapist and she kind of like inspired me to be bottom happy which is a term for another day, that allowed me to really get clarity on what that season of my life was. At that point, I was like, okay, like 
I need to figure out an escape plan. And I know escape plan probably sounds like really drastic and this is no shade to my family. I love them down. I call it an escape plan because like I had to get clear on how I was going to get the heck out of my situation. Not because I was trying to run away from my family, but because it was literally turning me into a person I did not want to be. And once I got that, I feel like I was able to be brought back down to earth like this is not the end of the world and this is a temporary situation that does not define me. I like to call my time back home like my pit stop because without it, I don't think I would have been able to get the clarity in just that rest period to figure out what my next move was going to be. You feel stuck? Absolutely. Will you feel trapped? Absolutely. Will you feel like you're you're stuck between your past and where you want to go? Absolutely. But once you've come down from that, it like gives you this clarity that you're able to actually appreciate your time home, appreciate your family, spend time with them, and just really cherish that time because living on your own is an entirely different chapter that is the goal, but it's still a learning curve that you have to adjust to once you're here. When I tell you the living with your parents, living with your family, when you are grown will humble you, but for the better. I mean, even with this like last trip that I went on to VidCon, you know, I had vlogged my experience at VidCon and I don't know if I talked about it in the video or in that three part vlog series, but my mom gave me a really hard time about going on that trip. Like she was doing her like, she was trying her hardest to not let me go to VidCon and she just, she wanted to know everything and I'll, I'll get into that later with the the lack of privacy as well but yeah just that lack of independence was really really hard and i'm like oh my god like i just i don't i don't want to be in here so yeah let's get into the lack of privacy that comes with living at home in your 20s oh my gosh this has to be probably the biggest pain point that i have with living at home because again i have a mother that is very invasive she wants to know every little thing even my grandma to a certain extent like she's also like that but like worse because she'll get like angry if you don't tell her stuff but my mom is very much just like she wants to know everything she wants to know everything that i'm doing at every minute of the day she wants to know who i'm talking to and you know if i make plans she wants to know what are we doing where are we going who am i going with she wants to know the the license plate number of the person that's picking me up like she wants to know every little detail and it's been driving me insane because i'm just like again i am not a kid anymore i don't need to constantly check in and tell you every single detail of my life and it's just very very infuriating like even with me going to the bathroom and I think this is what really started to set me off when I was first starting to live at home after college my mom had this really bad habit of questioning me when I was in the bathroom for too long mind you too long in the bathroom for her is like more than five minutes so if I spent more than five minutes in the bathroom she would start knocking on the door asking me what am I doing why am I why have I been in there for so long and it seriously used to piss me off so bad because i'm like it's the fucking bathroom it doesn't matter what i am doing here this is supposed to be the one room in the house that is supposed to have privacy like i i shouldn't have to explain to you what i'm doing in the bathroom like and i think it also stems from the fact that when i was younger my mom wouldn't really let me have a lot of time to like get ready in the bathroom like she would always like rush me and she has certain things in her mind that she feels like are you know necessary things that you should be doing in the bathroom and then there's other like vanity things that she feels like isn't as important and so for instance she thinks that the bathroom is only supposed to be used to go to the bathroom like so be on the toilet you know brush your teeth and then maybe wash your face anything outside of that she feels like is unnecessary and then if I were to even say like hey I'm doing x y and z she'll try to rush me out or if we're going somewhere she'll like open the door and basically like damn near leave me at the house and we're supposed to be leaving together and she did that a lot when I was younger and 
some of those things would be like you know me putting on makeup right my mom doesn't wear makeup so she doesn't, she doesn't look at makeup as like a necessity right there were literally times when i was in high school where i would be in the bathroom and again i don't take that long in the bath. i literally can't take long in the bathroom because i'm conditioned to rush all the time so there's really nothing that i do in the bathroom it takes me a long amount of time to do and it's because of her constantly rushing me when i was younger but like i would do my makeup and stuff and again not like a full face beat even like i know it kind of looks like i have a full face beat now but i really don't i have on foundation concealer and lashes and when i was younger it was even less than that it was i don't even think i was wearing foundation i think i was wearing uh like eyeshadow and mascara you know back back in that era right and so there'll be times where i'll be in the bathroom i get done brushing my teeth and maybe i'm in the middle of like doing mascara and i would have one eye done and my mom would literally tell me i have to leave the bathroom right now and i have i have to go and so i would literally have to grab like a makeup wipe and wipe the mascara off because she couldn't allow me 30 more seconds to do the other eye and so i think that's where a lot of that trauma stems from is because she used to rush me in the bathroom so much when i was a kid that even now as an adult if she asks me what i'm doing in the bathroom i lie and that's the other crazy thing too it's like and y'all might call cap on this but i promise you i'm not lying i was such a goody two shoes when i was younger and i was such a, a rule follower that i never lied like i never lied to people i never lied to, to my mom like i was always just scared to lie and so even if i told her the truth knowing that i was gonna get yelled at i still would do it but at at my adult age <laughs> i am just at a place in my life where i want to prioritize peace and i just gotten to a point where i'm just tired of getting yelled at i'm tired of getting yelled at i'm tired of people taking out their frustrations out on me and so i have now gotten to a point where sometimes i'll literally will just like tell little white lies just to maintain my peace of sanity and so for me it's like if i'm in the bathroom and i'm doing my makeup i know if i tell my mom that i'm doing my makeup she's gonna yell at me and so i literally will lie and be like oh i'm just on the toilet or i'm washing my face or i'm doing my hair like i'll make up something because and again there's something wrong in with the fact that i'm using the bathroom to do my makeup or i'm using the bathroom to do x y and z but it's just the fact that like she she just i don't know like she just gets upset if i'm in the bathroom for more than five minutes for whatever reason and she'll start questioning me or talk to come up with something to get her to like leave me alone because even with that like i couldn't even come up with like a basic uh morning routine for myself because it's like i would get up go to the bathroom i would start brushing my teeth and immediately a mom what are you doing why are you in there for so long? And it's just like, all I've done is brush my teeth. I can't even wash my face. So for, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna hold you. There was a, a while where I didn't even wash my face because I couldn't, I, I couldn't without getting fussed at. Hey, what are you doing in there? I'm going to the bathroom. Hey, why is this door shut? I'm getting dressed. Who are you talking to? My friend. What are you doing in here? Um, nothing. This is exactly how it is like to live with a narcissistic parent. You do not get any privacy whatsoever. You can't lock the door of your room. You can't stay too long in the washroom. And all of a sudden, they will need all the things in it when you are in there. You can't have the privacy to talk with someone on your phone. It is worse than living in a prison. You feel naked and extremely vulnerable, unshielded and unprotected. Hey, I was wondering if you were, whoa, nobody knocks anymore? I'm getting dressed, okay. bro. First of all, watch who you're talking to, bro. Second, I've seen everything already. There's nothing impressive. Can you just knock next time, like... And so for me, the lack of privacy has just really been hard. And I've just, I've honestly just been trying to find ways to just, to just deal with it. Honestly, like there's just, there's little things that I do to try and maintain my privacy. But then there, there's still a lack of boundaries or not even a lack of boundaries. Because again, I try to set boundaries. I try to set boundaries and the boundaries just aren't respected. Like even when it comes to me talking on the phone, that often gets very stressful because Again, I'm just somebody that likes to have my phone calls be private. I don't want someone listening in. And I certainly don't want her listening in because then she's going to start asking me a bunch of questions. And 
that's the other thing too is like whenever i would be on the phone and stuff like in the past my mom would always have like stuff to say it was always who am i talking to why am i talking to them about this she's like oh i heard i heard you say this but i think i would have said this differently like she'd be giving me critiques about what to say in phone calls like it's just it's, it's just it's a lot and so i i have requested that hey when i have phone calls and when i have meetings please just don't be in the area and we we live in a two-story home right and so i'm like hey when i have meetings and when i have stuff going on i'm talking to somebody just please don't be in the area like i just i i don't want to think about you listening in or hearing me and then of course she'll say like oh girl i'm not even worried about your phone call you saying that does nothing for me it's the thought that you could be sitting there listening to me and it's like again i just want some sense of privacy like it's not even the fact that any of these things are like that deep or that serious but i think it's just with everything piled on it's just like give me something like give me something to have for myself again I am an adult. You shouldn't have to be listening in on every single phone call that I have or again, knowing what I'm doing in the bathroom. Like, let me have something. When you were a child, did your parents repeatedly violate your boundaries? If you are the child of a baby boomer or maybe even older Gen X, then this might ring true for you. This kind of age group tended to look at their children as extensions of themselves and therefore did not give them space to have their own boundaries. Think about a child that maybe is trying on something in a changing room and the parent barges in and the kid is screaming, no, no, no. The parent then tells them you are being overly sensitive. Another really common one is something to do with food. Many times a child will say, I'm not hungry and the parent will force them to keep eating anyway. But here's the thing. If you were a child of this style of parent, I'm going to take a wild guess that you have problems setting boundaries in your life right now. That's because when you were a child, it was modeled to you that you shouldn't have any. This is just another example of how things that happened to us in our childhood can still be actively affecting our life in negative ways. To begin to heal this, I would just start to recognize that you have this issue. Then you can start out setting small boundaries about things that don't have a big emotional pull. Doing this is going to feel super weird at first if you have no experience doing it, but I promise you with a little practice, it will get easier. But there are some family members that will get a rise out of violating your boundaries. And actually, the more that you initiate those boundaries, the more you talk about them, the more that you tell them that those are your boundaries and that they're upsetting you when they violate them, the more they are going to violate those boundaries. And when you find yourself head to head with someone like this, that you're like, wow, every time I reiterate that this is upsetting me, they do it even more. This is a person who is not capable of respecting your boundaries. And this is a person that you might need to say, I can't put myself in positions where they're even able to violate my boundaries because I know that they're going to do it and they seem like they actually like it. Um, this is a video for anyone who um, is struggling or who is still living at home with their parents and is struggling with boundaries because you are an adult but you're still at their house and you don't want to disrespect them, but you also want to make it clear that, yes, I am your child, but I'm not a child, especially with the black mother and daughter dynamic. It is very frustrating because if your mom is like my mama, it don't matter what you say, she is the mother. Doesn't matter how old you are, how many jobs you got, kids, cars, degrees, her way is always going to be the way, and that's just what you have to deal with. And I don't know, it's frustrating. And I feel like conversations need to be had, but those conversations are hard to have because we're dealing with parents from a different generation and they don't know about boundaries and therapy and all that stuff. They, they, they don't care about that. So I don't know y'all pray for me i i just i need some tequila <laughs> a lot of parents today are mistaking us expecting them to be self-aware and recognize when they are ignorant to how we want to be treated with us expecting them to have it all figured out as young adults who are growing and changing with a world that is also forever growing and changing we are not expecting you to magically know how to communicate with us but we are expecting you to be able to look inside and say, hey, I am ignorant 
as to how to communicate my love for you at this moment in time. Once you all are able to do that, it is then our job to be receptive of your ignorance and be receptive with the fact that you're not going to get it right every time. You're going to mess up. But it is your job to constantly acknowledge your ignorance and to constantly ask your child, how can I best communicate with you? And to this day, I'll still have her standing by the door. I'll still have her, um, cause like the way our house is set up, right? Like I'm, so this isn't my room. This is just the room that I film in. And so I have this room that I do my meetings in and then I have my phone calls in. This is literally the only room in the house that I talk to people in because it's the most private uh, area in our house. And we have the laundry room like right outside this door. I kid you not, there have been times where I literally told my mom like, hey, I'm gonna be on a Zoom call for from 4 to 4 30 please don't come down here and I kid you not right at four o'clock she will come down here she'll start doing laundry and I'm like why can't you just like why can't you respect my boundaries for like a couple minutes <laughs> Like it's just it's in saying it pisses me off every single time every single time because I was like I keep telling her and she'll claim like oh well you know I tried or oh no I forgot and it's like I be telling you too many times for you to keep forgetting like it's just it's so annoying and there's been times too like again I'll hear her standing by the door and so I'll sit here and I'll purposely get quiet or not want to say anything and then I'll once I'm done talking to whoever I'm talking to I'll come out and I'm like hey I heard you by the door I asked you not to do that and she's like oh well I wanted to know if you were on the phone and I didn't hear you say anything and I'm like I'm doing that on purpose <laughs> I'm doing that on purpose because I hear you standing by the door listening so now I'm gonna purposely be mute because I don't I don't want you to hear me talking like I'm doing that on purpose and the other thing that pisses me off too about her constantly like coming down here when I'm starting a meeting is because you know when you hop in a zoom meeting even if you're not intending on talking a whole lot most of the talking that you do is when you you know enter the meeting room because you know you're you're saying hey saying how your weekend is and all of that and so I just I don't want her to hear me talking like that's just like a, a thing that I have like I just don't like when people hear me talking that's why when I film videos I only film videos when I have the house to myself because I just don't want that's I mean I did the same thing in college like I never really filmed like that in my dorm because the thought of other people hearing me was just like weird and gave me anxiety so I just didn't want to do it and so you know it's like you have that that's why like when my mom is around and I'm on my phone I'm usually trying to like not hide it but hide it like not in the sense where I'm literally like just flipping it but sometimes I'll like change the screen or whatever because there's been times where I'm sitting there scrolling on Instagram and she'll start being like you know oh who is that or who is this and you know how Instagram is it's just like any other social media you'll follow people that you know but you also might follow people that you don't necessarily know and so I never forget I was minding my own business on my phone scrolling on Instagram and she was asking me who all these people were on my on my feed and I was like I don't know they're just people that I follow and she's like why are you following people that you don't even know and I'm like oh my god because mind you my mom also isn't on social media and she doesn't know how social media works and so it's just again it's like why are you in my business or there's been times where she'll walk over here and look to see what i'm doing and, she'll, and it, the thing is not it goes beyond just her being nosy and her seeing what i'm doing it's all of the goddamn questions <laughs> she asks me so many questions and i'm just like why are you trying to get every itty bitty detail of what i am doing and so it's just it's gotten to a point where it's like it's not even so much what she's asking me or the things that she wants to know it's just that like i again i just want to have something for myself i just want to have something for myself and that's why she still doesn't know about my youtube channel because i don't i don't want that to be like another thing that she's monitoring and looking over and having having questions and comments and concerns about like i just want something for myself hey did you text your friend yes what'd you say i asked her what time she'd be there and she said around noon is that exactly what she said what what did she text you she said that she'd be there around noon oh, okay 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 who's taking her i don't know probably her mom i mean she might be driving herself wait so is her mom gonna be there or not I don't know. I don't know her life. Lose the attitude. Hey, uh, what is she wearing? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know anything. Well, I need you to know these things. Oh, you're back late. Yeah, I guess so. Where you been? Just out with my friends. Ah, uh, where'd you go? Just with my friends. We're going out. Oh, who was there? 
my friends. Oh, do I know any of them? Do you know any of my friends? Well, no, but... Well, then no, you don't know any of them. Oh. Where are you going now, then? Just into the kitchen. Oh, what are you doing? Just walking into the kitchen. Have you eaten? No, I haven't eaten. That's why I'm going into the kitchen. Oh. What's that, then? This is an aero bottle. Is that not food, or...? No, it's water. Ah. Oh. Well, what time did you go out? I don't know, like five. Oh. You... When did you get back? I just got back. You just saw me. Oh. That's insane. Yeah, I guess If you I ask did. another pointless question, Dan, I'm going to lose my mind. Was it part of growing up to hate your dad or something? Jeez. What? Where are you going? I don't even know yet. <laughs> Who going with you? Whoever come, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> what y'all going to do? I'm trying to figure it out now. I don't know what we're doing. Y'all going to eat? I hope so. I'm hungry. I but yeah, sorry. I feel like I'm going on a tangent at this point. But yeah, I don't know. It's just, and I don't know if anybody else has experienced this with their parents. And let me, please let me know in the comments if you have about just the insane amount. Like you feel like you're being interrogated all the time. I guess that's just the best way to explain it. It's, it's always just, it's an interrogation. And it's, it's literally with everything. Like even down to like, I don't know, like let's say we run out of a paper plates or whatever and then i come downstairs and i get some more to put them on the, the kitchen table then it's oh why did you put the paper plates right here instead of right here or why did you get that many when you could have got this many like it'd be it'd be dumb questions i'm sorry it'd be questions where it's just like what like why are you asking me that like why why does that matter why do you care it's like every little thing comes with a question even to the way i eat for a long time, I hated eating in front of people because of the way my mom would critique that. Like, oh, why are you? Oh my god! And that see, that's gonna get me on another. <laughs> that's gonna get me on another tangent because the way my mom critiques the way that I eat drives me in freaking sane. I'll make up an example. So let let's say I'm eating macaroni and cheese, right? Let's say I'm eating macaroni and cheese, and I like to put a little extra salt and pepper on my mac and cheese. She will literally sit there and be like, you know, oh, why are you putting that much salt on your macaroni and cheese? Or have you tried eating it without pepper? Have you have you tried eating it, you know, like you know the way that that is made? Like why are you putting on that extra seasoning on it? And it's like I don't know. It's just it's just something about food, <laughs> and maybe it's because I'm a foodie. But it's like, I'm going to eat my food the way I want to eat my food. And it's like, I don't understand why you think your opinion has any weight when it comes to, to what I eat. This is going in my mouth. This is hitting my taste buds. Why would I sit here and adjust the way that I make food based off of what you think I should and shouldn't be doing? Like, I'm not about to do that. If I want my mac and cheese to have salt and pepper on it, I'm going to put salt and pepper on it, okay? I'm not going to not do that because you have an issue with it. Like, it's just, it's just like every little thing. I, I can't even breathe without her asking me, why are you breathing like that? Like, it, it's like everything is, inter is an interrogation and everything is a goddamn debate and that that's what pisses me off it's like everything is a damn debate again the way the way i might season my food or what i decide to wear what i decide to put on like everything is a damn debate and it's just like i did not ask you and i think that that's the thing it's like growing up there were so many unsolicited opinions that i would get from her about how she think that you know i should be just as a person because me and my mom are very very different we're very very different we're into different things i think that she really wanted me to be like her and i feel like she spent a lot of my childhood trying to get me to like things the way that she likes things without just accepting like hey like i'm just different and so even when it came down to like again what i would wear she would oh she'd been telling me my entire life that i have no fashion sense i have no fashion sense i have no fashion style mind you, this is the same lady that was wearing boot cut jeans with sneakers but she's telling me that i don't have any fashion taste because i wouldn't wear certain things that she wanted to put me in and it's just like or how about and i would say this to her even as a kid i'm like you keep saying i don't have any fashion sense or any good taste in fashion instead of you just simply saying hey we're two different people and we like different things why is it because i don't like something the way that you like it that it's wrong and that's the thing it's like if i don't eat food the way she eats it or if i don't eat the same type of foods that she eats i'm doing it wrong even with oh my god even okay you know i feel like I'm, i feel like i'm getting off topic but but, but my point point my point is is that i feel like she won't let me be my own person and i feel like she keeps trying to dictate what i should and shouldn't be doing and the things that i should be into instead of just accepting that this is just how i am and just learning how to embrace that instead of making everything a problem bro 
What's Bro. wrong with you? If you will say any opinion or say t- something, no, say it. Why it is so harmful to you? Why you are getting pressurized? You know why it's a problem? Because as a kid, I'm constantly trying to please you, and kids are trying to constantly please their parents. So if a parent is displeased with a decision, then the kid's gonna feel bad. The kid's gonna start to feel guilty. The kid's gonna feel like, damn, I'm not, not making my mom happy. I'm not making my parents happy. They're gonna be mad at me, right? If you tell me your opinion, that's the problem. Because now I can't make a decision without feeling bad. I can't make a decision without feeling like, oh, you're going to be upset. I can't make a decision without you being mad. I can't make a decision oh. without you getting pissed off at me. That's that's the problem because now I can't make that decision without feeling bad because I have a heart. I have a heart. I could be heartless, and there's kids out there like that. You know there's kids out there like They don't give two shits what their parents say. With us, with brown parents, with in our culture, in our growing up, first generation kids, we care so much what our parents think and say. We don't want to disappoint them. We and don't want to upset blessing. them. It is a blessing. And we don't want to upset them. So at the end of the day, I want to do something in my life and make that decision. But now I feel bad. Now I don't want to do it. Now I don't even want to go out because you're mad. I'm always trying to please you. That's because, you know why? Because we have a heart. I believe forcing things on your kids, such as sports or just anything in general, is dumb. Allow your child to figure out who they are, what they are, and who they want to be. And also allow them to make their own decisions. I really hate that parents think that they had us, so that means they can force us to do anything that they want us to do. No, it doesn't work like that. Do what's best for you and do what you want to do. And I would also express that whatever they're trying to force you to do, that you're not interested in it. How can I get interested in something if you're forcing me to do it? Allow me to make the decision for myself. I really don't understand why parents do that. I personally never had to deal with being forced to do anything that I didn't want to do. But I was also stopped from doing a lot of things because my parents have done it and they just believed that I would fail at it because they did. And guess who proved I'm wrong? Me. Because one thing about it, two things for sure. Yes, you can allow me to fail, but don't prevent me from failing. I'm never going to grow as an adult if you prevent me from failing all the time. Like, that's, let it go. And, you know, it's, it's, it's getting to a point, too, because, you know, I also saw in in one of the TikTok videos that I watched, they basically were saying that they felt like, you know, the space that they're currently living in doesn't reflect who they are as a person. And I definitely feel that. I feel like when I came back home, I had to deal with a lot of, like, lingering energy that was in my room that I wasn't expecting to deal with. Because, you know, I will say, like, a lot of my childhood was really rough especially like in middle school and high school because of all the bullying and stuff that I had to deal with and so a lot of the nights in my room growing up were spent crying it was spent crying you know being depressed like I think even at one point like I want to say my my junior year of high school potentially there was one year in particular where I didn't go one single night without crying and I'm not I'm not joking I'm not exaggerating I literally went to bed every single night just crying my eyes out and I just have so many of those memories of just being sad depressed anxious just all over the place I didn't have a lot of happy nights in that room and so when I came back home it was almost like all of those negative emotions that I had been dealing with in that room were still there when I got there and I just I felt myself st- still feeling all of that negativity in that room and it's just I I just don't have a lot of positive memories or positive energy that is in my childhood room that I still sleep in to this day and so I think you know as I'm now starting to kind of clean out some things and you know remove certain things from my room and finally starting to redecorate I I think that I'm finally going to start feeling a little bit better in my room and I, I I do start to feel that change I actually recently just went through and started like cleaning out and purging a bunch of stuff and I feel so much better like my energy feels better my energy feels lighter I think it's because I'm starting to you know remove a lot of that stuff and because also too my room still looks how we did when I grew up like I still have a lot of like Winnie the Pooh and Club Penguin stuff on the wall I have like magazine posters on my wall I have a Hello Kitty poster on the back of my door like I have a lot of kids stuff that brings me back to that time and although the nostalgia is great it doesn't reflect where I am and so I feel like just to kind of get myself in the space of evolving and elevating into who I'm becoming I feel like my space also needs to reflect that and I think that for a long time I was hindering myself from redecorating my room or doing anything with it because I kept I kept telling myself, oh, I'm going to move out. Like, I didn't want to get comfortable. I didn't want to make my room too comfortable because I had anticipated on not being there for very long. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to do all this redecorating and I'm just going to end up leaving. But considering that we're now going on year two (laughs) with me being in this room, 
I'm like, okay, I I think that I finally need to make this space into my own because it looks like I'm going to be here for a while and I'm not going anywhere. So I might as well make this a living, a, a more comfortable living environment for me. And so I think that's also one of my goals for this year is to just turn my space into a space that feels comfortable for me and a space that creates a uh, better energy for me and my spirit. And hey, if I end up doing the whole redecoration and something happens to where I move out, then I'll, I'll just <laughs> pack my room up and take it with me. But I have to do something to kind of just shift the energy in that room because I feel like it's, it's definitely bringing me back to when I wasn't in such a good place and I'm trying to get out of that. The mental capacity of like being home in your hometown in like your childhood bedroom you it's just so unmotivating it, and it like you drains you more, yeah. so hard it's crazy also another thing that i've heard a lot of people talk about even some people too that you know maybe they moved out but maybe they stayed in their hometown is not being able to see their friends anymore that's something that really 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 was tough with me living at home was not being able to see my friends because I don't really talk to anybody from my hometown like at all and most of the people that are from my hometown that I went to school with they don't even live here anymore and so I don't have friends that live near me so anytime that I want to do anything or have any type of social life I have to travel and I usually have to travel two hours plus whether it's by train ride or by vehicle anytime I want to go see anybody it requires hours and hours of travel and I hate that and I felt like that definitely took a toll too on me moving back home and that was a big reason why I didn't want to move back home because I'm like no one is back home for me to hang out with and I know it's easy for people to say like oh well just go out and make new friends but it's honestly not that easy especially as an adult and again I live in a very small town and there's not really much that happens here because even if I were to you know try to go out locally and do something that's still probably a maybe a 40 minute trip to Richmond because Richmond mostly is where everything happens um but you know where I live at there's like not much going on so but anyway I say all that to say like yeah a lot of my friends a lot of my support group at this point they all live in Northern Virginia and I <laughs> don't live there right now and that's part of why I want to move back there because to be completely honest with you I'm not pressed to really live in Northern Virginia specifically I mean yes it's a nice area the crime rate is low they have a lot of nice shopping centers and a lot of nice restaurants it's close to dc but it's also mad expensive and i don't i honestly don't want to pay northern virginia prices for an apartment like I, I really don't but i feel like the whole point of me moving out is to not only just be on my own and finally have that sense of independence but also to have like a social life and to be able to, to go out so i feel like there's no there's literally no point in me moving out and living in a town where i still can't see my friends I felt like that would just be a big waste of, of moving out. Because that was the big debate that I was having in my mind. I'm like, okay, do I move out and still kind of live close to home so that way I don't have to pay that much in rent, but then still have to travel out to see my friends? Or do I try to save up enough money to move all the way out there so I can actually have a social life and actually live my life? Like, I'm just, I'm, I'm just, I'm at that point, and I've been at that point for a while where I really just want to live my life and do more. No one prepares you for the loneliness that you feel in your 20s. I'm currently sitting alone in my apartment. It is one in the morning. I'm drinking water out of a wine glass because it's the only thing I have clean. And all of my friends are either with their boyfriends, with their husbands, with someone. And I feel like the odd one out because I don't have anyone. I have myself and my dog. And don't get me wrong, I love being alone, but I just feel like people at this age are really selfish and you lose a lot of friends the chaos of being in different phases of life and it sucks and honestly i just feel forgotten about and pushed to the side welcome to your 20s no one talks about this but the hardest thing about living at home with your parents after college is the lack of social life and if you know me personally you know i am a social butterfly i love meeting people and hanging out but it's a friday night and i'm just chilling on my bed with my dog and I've come to terms with my alone time and my weekends just being full of rest and peace. However, I do see the lives of my friends who moved to cities like SF or New York and I can't help but feel FOMO should I be going out every Friday night. But here's a reminder to not fall into the trap of 
this expectation that you should go out every weekend because you're in your 20s and you should be living your best life. And FOMO is normal, but like my therapist says, just put that thought on a cloud and let it float away. Because your mental health, physical health, and well-being should be number one. And you could always make plans with your friends on the weekends. Like, I have a Galentine's tomorrow. I did my nails. I'm rooting for you. I want to see my friends. I want to see my friends. I want to hang out with them. I'm tired of going on Instagram and seeing everybody have fun and go out and do all the things. And I'm just sitting at home. And it's like I only really get to do maybe one or two things a month because of the cost of travel. And it's just it's just really, really frustrating being away from people. And I also think that might have played a role in why me and my last partner didn't work out because of long distance and I wasn't in the area and so it's like you know why would I try to work things out with somebody that's like literally not even here and so it's just been really hard living at home and feeling isolated from everybody and I felt very isolated for a while I don't feel as isolated now because I'm starting to make friends and I have people to talk to now but for a while it was just it was very isolating being at home because it's one thing to not have anyone to like physically hang out within person but it's another thing to not have that and not have anybody that's calling you texting you and like facetiming you like and again I, I had that in one particular individual but then you know obviously things ended with that and so I just felt very very isolated at home and so I don't I, I, I don't like that aspect of living at home I think a lot of people are experiencing that where it's like especially when you move back to your hometown it's like especially if you didn't go to college in your hometown too like that's the other thing it's like I didn't go to college in my hometown and so all of the the friendships and all the people that I've met in college and in that area they're all still up there <laughs> everybody is still up there meanwhile I had to come back home because I didn't already live up there and so you know and also dating too like people have been asking me oh you're gonna start dating again and you know x y and z i'm not really pressed to start dating again to be honest like it's the last thing on my mind but even in the event that i wanted to start dating that's also going to be really challenging living at home because again i have a mother that wants to know everything that i'm doing at all times at all minutes of the day and just the thought of me you know wanting to go out and talk to somebody and you know it's just it's a lot like there would have to be a lot of ducking and dodging in terms of having phone calls with this person and then me trying to come up with excuses as to why I'm out all the time all of a sudden because again my mom is aware that no one that I know lives around here so if I'm just leaving the house all the time that's going to be a hard thing to explain and I also have to mention the fact that my mom has security cameras around the house and so even if I were to try and have someone come pick me up or if I were to get up and leave and meet somebody somewhere she's going to see on the cameras that I left the house and so there, there's just <laughs> there's there's too much surveillance and there's too much uh question questioning and interrogating for me to feel comfortable even dating at this point and so that's pretty much a no-go until I move out so yeah I'm just at a point now where you know it, it did take a, a toll on my mental health for a while like I want to say at least for a year it took me a year to actually come to reality with the fact that I was living at home because I I didn't want to accept it I'm like this is literally not happening and I had so many instances too where I thought I was gonna move out and then something would happen like even the first job that I got out of college like I was told that I was gonna go full-time and I was like oh I'm gonna have enough money to move out and then come to find out that I was not going full-time and they pretty much just were not being honest with me about the, the pay and everything and I just ended up leaving that job altogether because they tried to you know overwork me for lower pay and it just was it was just it was a no <laughs> it was a no for me um because it was it was clear as day that they could not afford to hire me on I don't know why they hired me on in the first place but yeah like it, it's just been it's been really really tough and I finally got to a place where I'm starting to <laughs> accept reality that's why even now almost two years later I'm just now deciding to redecorate my room and clean stuff out because I'm just like there's no point there's no point in me setting these these timelines when you know it's like I set a date I'm like okay I'm gonna move out by this date then the date comes and nothing happens and so I just I just don't see any point in setting a specific timeline for that it's gonna happen when is gonna happen I hope it's sooner rather than later because like I said I'm pushing 25 now and the thought of me being 25 still living at home is just uh but also I didn't think I was gonna be at home at 24 and 23 and so you know I'm, I'm, I'm doing my best <laughs> doing my best here and also again a lot of stuff just out of my control if I had the salary if I had the money to move out 
I, I would have moved out. And that's that's really been the, the biggest obstacle to me moving out is the money. I, I hate when people ask me over and over again, like, hey, so what's what's the plan? Like, you know, what do you, you know, how are you going to go about moving out? Literally a full-time job. Like I've, I've said it a thousand times. The plan has not changed. In order for me to move out and to be able to pay bills, I have to have the money to do so, period. And so because I have not had a full-time job yet, or because I haven't been able to land, you know, maybe multiple sources of income to help me pay for bills and to pay for rent that's why I'm here that's why I'm still living at home because I just don't have the money I don't have the income to move out once that happens then yes I can start looking at places and moving out the only thing that's stopping me is literally the money that's it and so you know right now I have a pretty good job uh, but it is part-time again it's part-time and it's not even $20 an hour <laughs> so again I'm doing the best I can in this job market and in this economy that we have and I think a lot of people can and testify to that like a lot of people even some people that are older than me and I'll acknowledge that there's people that are in their late 20s there's people that are in their early 30s that are struggling financially because of the economy or maybe because they got laid off from their job or whatever the case may be and the thing that's keeping them from moving out is money like I, I don't see how people don't comprehend that like it, there's literally no other reason someone would have that wants to move out and they're not moving out there's no other reason for that other than the money and so once I have the money <laughs> then I can move out and so I'm hoping that again as I start to grow in this role and then hopefully go part uh, full time and then maybe again if my YouTube channel continues to do well and I start to pull in a certain amount of money each month from YouTube you know hopefully that that will happen sooner than later but until then I just kind of sit and be patient because like I said I try working hard and exhausting myself to try to you know find sources of income and all it did was ruin my mental health that's honestly all it did was ruin my mental health up until things finally started to pan out but again it was something that I could really force I mean obviously you, you don't just sit around and do nothing and just give up and just wait for something to happen but it's like all you can do is your best all you can do is put your best foot forward and, and try your hardest and that that really truly is all you can do and so you know that that's what I'm doing I'm just trying to be patient I'm just trying to find things to be happy about in this season that I'm in in this waiting season that I am in and just you know hoping for the best but also not blaming myself because I'm not where other people you know maybe are and the other thing too with with that because people will also and I, I get people say this to me as a way to maybe calm my nerves or to reassure me that there's something wrong with the fact that I'm living at home but people will often tell me like oh like girl don't rush it because you gotta pay bills and you gotta you got all these other financial responsibilities and you know all, all this and that and it's like look <laughs> I get that but it's not even about rushing to pay bills like that's not like at, like part of being a uh, an adult and being a responsible adult is that you have to pay bills you have you have to pay for stuff like you just have to and so it's like yeah don't rush it but also it's gonna happen at some point and so it's just like for me it, it's not even so much about wanting to pay bills it's about wanting my peace of mind <laughs> it's, about, it's about wanting again my my peace my independence my privacy like it's you're you're paying for peace of mind like for me the the bills paying for bills is worth my my peace of mind now yes obviously I want to get to a point where I'm paying for bills and I'm comfortable I want to be financially comfortable and I am still prioritizing that goal but to say that like oh well if you live at home you know you get all your bills paid and it's like yeah but you also pay with your mental health <laughs> and so for me it's like if I can financially afford to take care of myself and be on my own I would rather do that so I can have again my, my mental peace and my sanity because again as much as I am blessed that I do have a mother that will still take care of me pay for my bills pay for groceries while I get myself together although I am blessed and grateful for that there's there's still a mental health element that suffers from that and so it's like I don't I don't want to live at home forever if you are between the ages of like early 20s to like late mid 20s please stick around let's talk seriously really quickly you know those people who say, oh yeah, stay at your parents' house for as long as you can. You're going to save so much money. You're going to do this. Don't listen to them, please. Don't let them persuade you, okay? Do not feel bad for leaving your home. It, and I'm going to tell you why. A lot of parents, we have to recover from their parenting. And I am starting to realize that. Like, I literally was so pissed off 
on New Year's Day. Like, I like the day after, not like 12 o'clock, but like waking up and it's New Year's Day. Like, I was so pissed off because they're just irritating me, right? I took a test that said that I was mildly depressed and I had mild anxiety. Like, I had low-grade depression, low-grade anxiety. And I'm like, wow, no shit. Because I felt like my behaviors were changing and I was becoming more dysfunctional and distressed. So I was like, okay, I need to figure out what the f is wrong with me. So now I'm trying to find a therapist. But it just goes to show you that 22 years of just trying to just be the best and just, you know, stick it out and just do... No, I would rather work two jobs, have eggs in the fridge, but and come home to a peaceful household. Not like... People don't understand. Like, if you're staying with your parents to save money and they're, you know, they're not crazy or they're not, like, in your face, great. But if it's causing, if you're developing mental illness, you need to, like, reevaluate. Staying at your home, at your parents' house, just to avoid, like, bills and stacking up your bread is not worth what you guys think it's worth. Like, it's it's really not. I moved out of my mom's house maybe about a year and a half ago and one of the biggest reasons was my mental health. It's something that I can't fully explain but I just feel far mentally better living alone than when I was at home. And honestly moving out is one of the best decisions I ever made for my mental health. I still visit my mom every single weekend. I see her at least once a week. I, you know, love my family. But I really just needed my own space to flourish on my own. Now, kudos to anybody that doesn't have any of these issues, right? They're comfortable living at home. It's like nothing for them. Like it's, you know, like there's some people out there that, you know, they can live at home and have their privacy and maintain their, their mental health and have their bills paid. I can, I can see why they would be, you know, chilling. And I don't blame those people at all. I think people should take advantage of the resources that they have. You know, I don't think that anyone should be judged for that. But I know for me and for a lot of other people, it's, it's literally just, we're tired. <laughs> We're tired and we want our own space. We want to be able to move freely without having someone to debate us or try to control us or try to get into all of our business and question everything that we do and still treat us like a child because that's really the biggest thing. It's like for a lot of us living at home, it's like we're still being treated like children. And it's I think partly of it is because our parents are taking care of us. I think for a lot of us when, or at least for me, right, when I was in college, I was able to maintain boundaries a little bit easier because even though my mom was still taking care of me financially to a certain degree I was still like moving freely and on my own so my mom couldn't tell me you know hey don't go out at 10 o'clock because she like I, I'm not at home like you have no control over that you don't know what I'm doing at what time like I, I have that independence I don't have to check in and do any of that and so I think a lot of times parents do that as a sense of control but also because a lot of them just don't know how to accept that their child is, is growing up and so I feel like it, it takes for that separate it takes for you to move out and be on your own for your parents to fully accept that you are your own person now and they cannot control you and so you know again right now I'm just not chilling per se but I'm not going to stress myself out with moving out anymore it's gonna happen when it's gonna happen it's not something that I can rush it's not something that I can force and I just pray that I'm not still in my 30s living at home I, I pray to God I pray to God that the economy gets back right sooner than later I know people are saying that we're heading into a recession i've heard people saying we're potentially going into another great depression which i don't know if i'll be able to handle that i'm not gonna hold you um but yeah i'm hoping i'm hoping and praying that things get a little bit better um uh, with the economy and if not i just pray that things get better for me financially and that i get bigger and better opportunities or promotions or whatever the universe has in store for me in terms of my finances and i get to a place where i can move out and be on my own but yeah i think that's all that i had to say for this video i was not expecting to talk for this long i was expecting this to be like maybe a 30 minute video but it looked like it, it might hit an hour um but we'll see but yeah i i had a lot to get off my chest with this particular video because it's it, it really is something that's been on my mind for a while now and i just had a lot of grievances to get off of my chest in terms of me living at home and just having to again deal with just all the interrogation and debates and just you know why are you doing this and why are you doing that and who are you talking to and what are you doing and it's just like it's too much <laughs> 
I'm an adult. Treat me as such. But anyway, that's all I have to say for this video. Let me know if you can relate to anything that I've said in this video. Let me know if you're currently living at home in your 20s and how that experience has been for you. And let me know your overall thoughts on this video. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you guys go ahead, give it a big thumbs up. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.